Um, well, it kind of felt like a home game because we have the best fans in the country, and they really came out and supported us tonight. And um, when we made our runs, you can hear our fans train us on pretty loud. And I'm just very blessed to have those type of fans. And uh, I mean, Gonzaga is a great place to play at, and I just love our fans, and they die hard. And uh, I want to uh, say thank you to them. So. Um, I mean, just my teammates are able to give me the ball and and then step out and start errors on errors on the court, and um, I just try to stay aggressive. And um, I just want to thank my teammates for just putting me in the right places to, uh, to get the ball in the store, and also Coach Street and Tommy and B Mike and Dunny put me in all great spots to uh, you know go to work. So I want to thank them too. So. Coach, you, you want to start with a statement, Coach? Uh, let's just go with questions, whatever. Yeah. Let's just roll. Okay, how are you feeling after a game like that? I mean, we lost, so I mean, not feeling too good. But as a team, I feel, feel like um, our motto is to get better week by week. And I feel like we made a significant jump as, as a unit tonight because we all came in and fought hard. We came up a little short, but uh, I mean, Florida, I mean, they are ranked number seven. They're a great team, as you can see. They up. Uh, to pull out the win, but uh, but as a, as a unit, I feel like we made a huge jump tonight. And, uh, we fought hard, and I'm proud of those guys in the locker room. So, coach, you said after the Utah State game, you guys need to play tougher in this tournament. How would you feel about the way you guys stepped up to that challenge? Oh, we were great. We were great. It was a great basketball game. I mean, just an epic game. There was a lot of adjustments uh, from both sides, staffs, players. Uh, just some heroic uh, efforts with the minutes and the, uh, just the, you know, just oomph that's been put out by this guy. And, and, and uh, we were running out of bodies. Uh, but uh, Mike made some really good adjustments. I thought he made a great adjustment against our zone uh, coming out in the second half. And, uh, uh, but man, our guys fought, you know, and their guys fought. And uh, it was just a spectacular game. We both. You know, they ended up winning it. We had our chances to win it. We didn't get it done, and uh, and uh, they did. But uh, you know, they hit some big, big shots to in order to get it done. It wasn't from our any lack of effort or lack of execution or anything like that. They just they just won. Mark, could you just take us uh, the emotions of the huddle. It, they made some big shots. You made big shots. I mean, this was the game of the year in college basketball so far. It's a young season, but it, this was a mentally high level play on both sides, and there's so many shots going in. That's a lot of questions for a bath. I'm trying to <laughs> process that up. <laughs> uh, well, just obviously, uh, uh, you know, early on, I mean, uh, at halftime, we felt pretty good with our defense. I mean, we had, I think we held them to 29 points, which I assume was one of their lowest totals I, I, uh, of the year. Uh, defended them really well. Our DER was in good shape, and then they came out, like I said, and really. Hurt our zone early, so we went man. We were able to have some success with the, uh, the man. Uh, we were having great success with some of our ball screen action, especially with movement before our ball screen action. Then we were finding J3 at the end of it. And uh, we pretty much kept playing uh, that out. But obviously losing Tilly's huge. You know, Tilly is, is someone that, you know, that just makes life easier for him, the guards, all of us. So uh, that was, that's a big blow. Uh, and then, you know, obviously, we, I think we played 15, 16 minutes without him. We played 8 or 10 without Perkins. So uh, we just started. And what happens then is we're getting some really, really young guys out there with some of our sophisticated switching that we do on offense. And, and uh, they're, they're just not quite up to speed yet, which is understandable. I mean, we're you know, three or four weeks in. So short turnaround tomorrow, how do you get your guys <clears throat> mentally, emotionally over this team and also prepared for technical? Well, fortunately, fortunately, we have a day, so I mean that helps. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, literally, uh, like I told them, nobody should feel bad in this locker room. It was it was just a great basketball game. We had our chances. We put ourselves in position to win, and you know, a play here or a play there uh, would have got it done. Uh, you know, I screwed up, uh, or not. I mean, I, I made a call on a play at the end of regulation. It didn't didn't pan out, so that's on me. So, I mean, that's the way it is when you got a lot of possessions like that. Uh, 
So nobody should feel bad. We just got to rest up. I think the thing with us is we played heavy minutes in a really super physical game, and, and uh, we just got to rest up. You talked about heroic shots. Perkins had a few of those. Can you just, what do you have to say about his play? End of regulation. No, I mean, I think Josh is off to a really, really good start this year. I mean, really good. He's, he's valuing his, his three-point shot, which is, is uh, he's an elite-level shooter at the point guard position. You know, we played some elite level shooters today, but, you know, he's certainly right there. And I thought he managed uh, the game very well. Really hard game to manage because there's so many possessions and there's just so much heat being put on you on the defensive uh, uh, end. And just really quick athletic guys uh, that are, you know, that can make plays and run through passing lanes. And I thought he did just a phenomenal job uh, at the point managing it. Coach, uh, Silas is, you know, hometown kid from Portland, four-year guy for you. He's, he's kind of had an, um, an increased role. You know, can you just talk about um, how important he's been to the team? Yeah, I mean, we, it's the size kind of our – he's our zag holdover, man. He, he, he plays and possesses all those zag qualities that, you know, that go all the way back 20 years through this run. And he values them and, and he, you know, exemplifies them to the, to the team – you know, constantly. Uh, he's not a big rah-rah guy. He's not a big loud guy or talk guy. But what he is, he's kind of, he, he is kind of the, the essence of what our program's all about. He's, he's very selfless. He gives you great effort, and he's, you know, not afraid. I thought he did a great job. He hit a little lull in the middle of that game, and he flipped the switch and came and made some big, big plays uh, down the stretch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would, that would be the one that you would definitely, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt, I would, I'd just say, I mean, I, they're both probably the same, just with, and I, would, I say that because, you know, just the heart and the soul and the courage being exemplified or being, you know, just shown to all by all the Florida guys and all my guys uh, during it was just crazy. I mean, they were, you could tell guys were gassed and just looking at each other and, and, uh, and yet still making plays and still making jump shots, which is unbelievable. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's one, you know, we're going to – we'll kick ourselves for a little bit for not winning it, but uh, we, we're certainly not going to feel bad. Florida's a heck of a team, a heck of a team. And I, ironically, we were in the same situation last year with them. Uh, the second day uh, of a tournament uh, uh, down there and played a great game down in Orlando and it got in their backyard and uh, ended up fortunately being able to win it. And uh, so that's the way it is. Mark, just what are your overall thoughts on this PK-80 tournament and how important is it when you do get to March to have these experiences lead up? Oh, these are great. This is why you play in these. I mean, this is just a uh, – it's – you know, what amazing amount of organization and effort I went into. I think somebody was talking about that the other night at the event. Just, I think Phil was like, well, there's no way this is going to happen. There's no way you can get them all together at one site. So, I, I, like he said, I think, you know, all the athletic directors, all the coaches or whoever, all of us that handle scheduling, you know, uh, need a good pat on the back. This is what college basketball needs. You know, we need to do things like this. We should be doing things like this. Uh, this has got to obviously capture the attention of, of a lot of people. And, I mean, this, this tonight, guys, was what's why college basketball is so great. You know, everybody's focusing on the, you know, the 2% that isn't so great right now. But, I mean, this is why, why you guys cover it, why it's been a huge part of my life, why it's his life. I mean, it's the best. And that was, that was shown tonight. So that's why these things are great. And heck, yeah, they prepare you for March, man. This was like a Sweet 16 Elite Eight game right there. Mark, a thought on Texas. Since I got one more. Seth Davis has fallen asleep here, so we all got to <laughs> we gotta hustle him back. He's on East Coast time. second win. <laughs> <laughs> thought on Texas and how, how improved they are to have to do. All yeah, I mean, look, shock is one of my – closest friends in the whole world. We were together with USA Basketball and, and have uh, 
stayed close uh, since that. He, he's done a phenomenal job. Uh, they, they in position to win that thing today. They look good offensively executing. They're defending good. He's got he's got the athletes. He's got uh, you know uh, Ostakowski's a great uh, skilled uh, uh, forward there. So yeah, I mean we're it's going to take some time to break that thing down and uh, prepare for them. All right, let's all go to bed.